Now, oftentimes getting started with lifestyle change is actually the hardest part for most people because there's this sort of activation energy which is required to begin the process of changing your habits. Now, it's easy to visualize change as though you're trying to climb this very large mountain and you're at the base of it and you don't even really want to get to the top. And the hardest part can actually sometimes be making your first ascent up the base of the mountain so that you can just get started with the process. But rather than taking a look at this large mountain in front of you and telling yourself that it's really impossible to get over to the other side or maybe even to get close to the top, I want you to think about it from another perspective. I want you to visualize it in a more realistic and actually more representative way of lifestyle change is actually like. Okay. Rather than taking a look at a large mountain and then getting discouraged about it, I want you to visualize a small hill, like a really small hill. Okay. Something as small as a highway overpass. That's not even really a hill in the first place. It's just a tiny little bridge, if you will, to get over a road. Okay. Now, if you visualize a highway overpass in your head, think about being on one side of it and walking over the highway overpass to get to the other side. Okay. You can probably walk up the highway overpass in less than two minutes. And you can cross over to the other side, probably in a total of three minutes or so. Now, if you imagine doing that repeatedly, all of a sudden the burden of climbing this large mountain goes away. Now, you might turn to me and be like, well, what are you talking about, Cyrus? This is, this is highway overpass. It's nothing. And the answer is you're right. But a mountain is nothing more than a series of ascents over a tiny highway overpass. So if you have the chutzpah to scale and cross over that overpass, then all you have to do is repeat that process over and over and over and over and over. And every time you do it, it's going to get just a little bit easier. It might get a little bit faster. It might get a little bit less burdensome. And it might just make your life a little bit more doable. Now, take in this idea of crossing over a highway overpass and doing it instead of three minutes and two and a half minutes. And then from two and a half minutes to two and 15 minutes or two minutes and 15 seconds. Now, all you have to do is add in the X factor. And the X factor is called time, okay? So time in this context refers to doing that same thing over and over and over again. And before you know it, the small hill here or there, which doesn't really take that much effort to cross, multiplied by a thousand iterations is effectively the same effort as climbing a mountain over the course of time, okay? It's just a mountain that's been chopped up into a thousand small pieces, and each one of those pieces is something that you can tackle on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Hopefully, this is making sense, okay? Now, we're humans, and humans just flat out don't like change. Humans resist change frequently, maybe too frequently, and it can become unnecessary, and it can actually get in the way of you making changes to your lifestyle and you making positive movements that are going to benefit your long-term health. So the key here is in finding your why. This is a process that can take a while, but it's totally worth it. And it's actually required for long-term success because if you can define exactly what it is that motivates you to want to change your lifestyle, then you're more likely to stick with it in the long term. And you're more likely to mentally not think about crossing a mountain every single time you make a decision, but instead crossing over a highway overpass that seems very doable because you have a reason to do it. So simple questions that you can ask yourself when you're trying to define your why. People refer to this as the why that makes you cry. Whatever you want to call it, right? The simple questions that you can ask yourself are, number one, why do you want to change your lifestyle in the first place? Okay, Why is this important to you? Is there something specific that you're trying to accomplish? You're trying to lower your LDL cholesterol level? Are you trying to lose 25 pounds? Are you trying to lower your A1C? Are you trying to be able to play with your kids a little bit more? Are you trying to go play a soccer game frequently and feel more human inside of your body? Are you trying to return to a more active lifestyle? Okay, Write this stuff down because it actually does matter. Next question I want you to ask yourself is, what is the best case scenario? AKA, if you were to change your lifestyle and you were to make some significant positive change, what do you hope can unfold from that process. You can fast forward a year into the future, maybe two years, maybe five years in the future, and picture your ideal self. Who are you in that best case scenario? And what has lifestyle change enabled you to do? At the same time, I want you to picture your worst case scenario and ask yourself a simple question. Say, if I don't change my lifestyle, well, then what's the worst case scenario that could happen to me? Who am I going to be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? And, you know, 
Will I even be alive? Okay. Another question you can ask yourself is, what is the story that's inside your head that you don't tell anybody? What's the story that's happening 24 hours a day that's in the back of your mind that you might not want to verbalize to anybody because it might feel uncomfortable? Okay. Another question you can ask yourself is, how important is this to you? On a scale of one to 10, is changing your lifestyle a one or is it a 10? Is changing your lifestyle something that you can kind of, you know, muster up a little bit of courage to do and, you know, you rank it on a scale of one to 10 as a two or is it a 50 because you really want to do it and you understand that the power of doing it and you're just struggling to get started. Finally, another question you can ask yourself is, who are you doing this for? This is a very important question. Are you doing this for yourself or are you doing this for someone else? Oftentimes we find that when people try to do this for someone else, it doesn't stick. But when you try and do it for yourself, it sticks. Why? Because humans are inherently selfish, but that's okay. In this context, being selfish is perfectly fine. So I want you to think about those questions that we just went over and I want you to answer them. I want you to run down on a piece of paper. I want you to take that piece of paper. I want you to stick it on your fridge so that you can look at it every single day. The next thing I want you to think about is that most people actually approach lifestyle change from a negative starting point. They say things like, my doctor told me to do this and I have to change my habits or my wife told me that I'm getting fat, so I'm gonna do this for her. Sometimes you'll hear things like, I'm sick of taking so many confusing medications. I just don't like it. Or my mom and dad both had heart disease and I'm trying to avoid the same fate, okay? If you make any of those types of statements, then what you're doing is you're projecting it on to someone else and you're approaching lifestyle change from a negative starting point because these are all things that you're trying to run away from as opposed to things that you're trying to move towards. So rather than focusing on what are you trying to escape, I want you to think about what are you trying to move towards? What is going to bring you joy if you move in that direction? So you can change the conversation that's happening in your head from I'm trying to escape this thing called diabetes or I'm trying to escape this idea of using so many medications. And instead, you can now focus it on thinking about, you know what? I can't wait to lose weight because if I do, then I'm going to get the opportunity to be as active as I was when I was back in college. Okay? Or you could say things like, I'm excited to become medication free for the first time in years because I've put in the hard work and I think I deserve it. Another thing you could say is, I can't wait to play basketball with my son and his friends. That would make me incredibly happy. Okay, so really think about these things. They, they might be small sort of mind games that you play with yourself, but the truth is that these things actually matter. Okay, if your inner monologue says something like, oh, this is boring. I don't want to do this. My doctor's making me do this. When can I stop? When is my cheat day? I don't like eating anymore, right? These are all negative associations that's going to make it very hard to sustain in the long term. Now, if your inner monologue says other things like, you know, let's go for a run. This is fun. I'm tasting new flavors. My tongue seems like it's awake. Hey, you want to eat that new chickpea dish that you made for me last week? That was really tasty. I have so much more energy. I've never felt this good. Okay. My brain is working better for sure. And I can feel it. Okay. If you make those types of statements to, verbally to other people, and then also inside of your own head, then guess what? You're setting yourself up with positive imagery, with positive associations, and then it's much more likely to work today and into the future. Okay. The truth is that when you change your lifestyle, you are likely to be happier. You are likely to be fitter. You are likely to have more energy and you are likely to look better in your own skin. You're likely to impress the people around you by the way that you look and by the way that you interact with the world. You're likely to impress yourself with your newfound youth and you're likely to have more energy than your kids and even your toddlers. And trust me, I have a two-year-old girl and she has a lot of energy. <laughs> So there's a lot of reasons to start to change your lifestyle. There's a lot of reasons to continue to eat a plant-based diet and to continue to modify your lifestyle for improved health. But let's have these conversations inside of your head. Let's write down your why and let's make sure you really believe it. Because at the end of the day, you have to be the one to believe it. It's not about whether I believe it. It's about whether you believe it. And if you believe it, then guess what? It's gonna happen. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. Now the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. 
answer some questions about yourself, and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's gonna show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.